First, I would love to welcome everyone again to the stage. Welcome everyone that's listening to this Twitter space that's dedicated to Latin America and the importance of this region to the development of Web3 technology. My name is Almond um, and I collaborate with Giveth in the community team. Hey, I think that Vlad is here again. So we created this Twitter space with Bankless Brazil, which is already here too. Because um, actually it was their, their idea. They wanted to made a, make a Twitter, Twitter space about this role that Latin America has played in the Web3 space and to actually recognize the importance of the region in the global adoption and innovation of Web3 technology. So I would love for you to introduce yourselves. Uh, maybe we can start with Bankless Brazil. I think that you were the first one that joined. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh... My name is Gelfi, behind here, Bankless Br Brazil. I, I am one of the uh, co-founders, one of the early people uh, uh, with the mission of Bankless Brazil. And we've been making uh, educational content since May of 2021 was the first time we started, but we are a community-driven um content producers so we do host podcasts we do have articles all in portuguese with the mission to onboard 100 million people to the ecosystem so that's pretty much what bankless is doing and we are present everywhere you can imagine in web 2 web 3 space and and yes and gustavo is also here as a speaker he's also a bankless uh kryptonita is also here he's also a uh, bankless and there's a bunch of other people here also as well from Bankless Brazil. That's great. Thank you so much for being here and for bringing all of uh, part of the Bankless Brazil community here to to the Giveth Twitter space. It's great to have you. So, um, Goose, if you want to introduce yourself, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. So, yes, as, as we have said, uh, I've been in banking, uh, contributing to, uh, to Brinkley's since 2021. I mean, I'm one of, one of the co-founders as well. I'm a committee manager there. And like Brinkley wasn't my first DAO, but like when I was invited to join this community, I couldn't have left that at uh, this community. I, that I'm mean, so proud. We are the first DAO uh, in Brazil. Nowadays, we have a bunch of committees there. We have more DAOs there. The committee is growing. I'm so happy that the the, the, committee, uh, the committee are growing there and like uh, united, you know, together in, in the same goal. So that's it for my side. Great. Um, I hear you, but I hear you kind of far. Maybe... Next time, if you can uh, put your cell phone a little bit closer to 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 you, I I uh, anyway I catch everything that you said. So no worries. Thank you so much, Goose. And let's go now with Kryptonita, also from the Bankless team. Hello, everyone. GM, GM. Uh, nice to see you all here and also to be participating here. Uh, yeah, so I'm from Bankless Brazil. I'm, I'm there since the beginning. Uh, it's awesome to see the community growing, uh, the Latin America community especially, getting together. Uh, we need to help each other. We have the same mission. Even though we have different ways of achieving this mission, it's awesome to see a lot of people interested in contributing and like getting together this Web3 ecosystem. Uh, um, on Bankless Brazil, I'm mostly on the podcast side, on the multimedia side, um, getting recordings, interviews, doing roll-ups, and like trying to get the best uh, multimedia coverage as possible. We do interviews um, and all the, all, all, like a lot of other things. And yeah, like I'm so happy to be here and to help the, this ecosystem grow. Yeah, we're super happy to have you. 
Um, and now let's go with Vlad, which is representing today Shapeshift. He's also from Brazil and also is a great friend of the Giveth community. Vlad, happy that you're here. Happy to have you. Yeah, happy to be here, guys. Happy to see this happening. Uh, yeah, as a, just to introduce myself and Vlad, I work on Shapeshift down globalization work stream, which the mission is basically to break the barriers to bring tech, the technology, the solution and education for um, other space. I'm a deep fan of Bankless Brazil. I'm like following since the beginning. I'm a big fan of Give it, and on Give it, I'm a project manager. I'm a donor. I'm a, uh, I really feel part of the, the community. So I, uh, I suggested that Bankless as the public goods that it provide made a profile on, on give it. and uh, I think an encounter like that uh, it's part of the mission of everyone here presented so very happy to be here and, uh, and yes let's get going yeah thank you thank you for introducing Bangladesh to the give it community and last for not but not least we have Mateo representing give it. hi Mateo hey Armon hi everyone how are you? Uh, yeah, this is Mateo. I'm from Givet. I'm working with this amazing community around to uh, 2020 around or so. But besides Givet, I'm also building community with Ethereum Colombia and It's Latam from 2021 or so. So it, this is a very, very interesting topic for me and I'm really happy to be uh representing give it in this in this space me too i'm happy that you said yes <laughs> so um after knowing a little bit more about yourselves let's jump into the juice of the conversation so i would love to start with the challenges that you see uh, Latin America make Web3 technology particularly uh, particularly relevant for the region um I wanted to make the format of this Twitter space a little bit more free so that everyone could participate in, and raise your hands and jump in whenever you want to talk. Uh, let's see if that works. If not, we can change the format. No worries. But uh, who would like to start? Just unmute yourself and, and maybe list some of the specific challenges that you, you see Latin America make Web3 relevant for the region. Yes, uh, I would like to, to talk about some of the challenges that we are facing today. Uh, one of them is educational uh, content. Um, I want to stick to Brazil, but it, it covers all the Latin America. Latin America population today is around 700 million people, if, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. It's a lot of people uh, in this country. Uh, most of it, uh, most of the countries in Latin America have a, a inf uh, inflation problem, have a uh, currency problem, and uh, cryptocurrency is just the right fit to change uh, the way we we interact, the way we do business. So, just in Brazil alone, uh, seven point eight percent of Brazil population, which is Brazil is the largest country in South America. Uh, is already into cryptocurrency, and uh, I think I think the there's a big challenge to get uh, projects, get protocols, get people from outside Latin America to to kind of see the potential uh, in the in the region. There are um, there was billions of dollars traded in stable coins just in Latin America by, by last year. And that's quite a lot. Uh, Latin America today faces a, uh, like I say, inflation and devaluation problem. And other countries besides us can't really see that. And we have to navigate around it and kind of start to producing content in, in our native language. We don't see anywhere, any other protocol, you know, 
caring about, okay, uh, here's a, a Portuguese version of it. Here is a Spanish version of it. It's most of it, it's English. And that's a big, big challenge. Not everyone speaks English in all America. Um, few projects are trying to penetrate these markets. They most most of it they, they're looking in the United States and Europe, and I think that's a big mistake from from the projects. So our challenge is to kind of educate most most of it educate people about about uh, uh, cryptocurrency and uh, and the protocol besides speculation that you can that's really a a new way to do business a new way to hedge yourself against. The uh, inflation is a new way to um, to uh, transact between among people. Uh, so that's that's to me is our biggest challenge to pass that message along. You know, to get the the English content and translate it into our native language to explain people to educate everyone about what we're really building here. And I don't see, and I don't think that most of people kind of got the idea of. A uh, Latin America, you know, in my my view, is one of the places that really need crypto. It's not about like investment. It's more than than just investment. It's they really need crypto to kind of uh, in their daily daily uh, lives. So yeah, so this is this is one of the challenges. I want to pass it on to see if other other guys have any uh, any other thoughts. But I I think. Uh, the language is one of the biggest challenges that we're facing right now. Go ahead, Blatt. Yeah, no, I, I have something to add on top of that because, like, besides, like, our efforts of translations and, like, bringing tools like these card bots that translates or anything else, there's an implicit challenge on this language challenge, which is the delay of the information I have to do with. So everything is released. Uh, in one language, even if you have like a top and sharp team like for doing that, there's like an implicit delay of information that gets here. So I think that kind of generates the need of more incentivization so we can always get on top of it. And uh, I like to add a challenge too because usually I'm dealing with like dApps stuff and communities and right now uh, we are in a place all together here in, in Sao Paulo, like building NFT Brazil. And it's clearly how the protocols and everything, like they want to be NFT New York or like places like that, where the spotlight really is. And there's like a really difficult uh, perspective, like for getting getting funds for like doing events that are major in education. It's because of the nature of like how the adoption is on Latin American again, like grabbing from Gus, um, grabbing from Gus, uh, the point where, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Cause I kind of lost track of it, but I was about to make a, a connection with, uh, another point, but basically it's where, oh yeah, where people, where like Latin America kind of needs that because the, the system is more broken here. So if you're all like getting like on spotlight of something like, like all the mm. I think that Vlad is having connection issues. Well, I don't know if it was just me, I but I cannot hear Vlad. Oh, here. yeah, because someone, someone here. called my phone. In the middle, here. Ah. but I think I made my point. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> yeah, I agree. We we just listen to some of the challenges. I I think that a big one, as uh, you both mentioned, is regards the economy, and this is why, of course, crypto is so attractive. But um, Goose, please go ahead and and add some more challenges if you want. Yes, I uh, like. Um... When you you when you live in a in a country where like your uh, your money uh, doesn't have a good value and the inflation is high, we start face another problem with scammers. Like people wanna have a better life, wanna like pay your bills, and 
you know, like most of the time we need money to 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 buy food, you know, the base things to live. And the scammers, when it, they come, they they come like strong offering like, oh, if you give me money, I'm going to get 10, 30 percent per per day, per week or per month. So people, of course, the people are going to accept that offer, even though like they scum the way they scum act is old it is our old way you know always they promise and tell you that i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna give more money so these scammers is really sad about that but they they have more voice than people who actually are trying to build things you know so this is another challenge that we are facing right now it's like okay, let's create a good content and let's um, make people hear. It's like okay, don't not your keys, not your coins. Like uh, don't don't listen to those guys who are trying to to have your keys, you know, or to off offering like high high uh, yields, you know. Like don't don't listen to them. So, but make people listen to that. Is really hard and challenge, you know. And I like the bear market because, like most of the those kind those kind of scammers, uh, leave the market. But like you know, is a is a is a challenge that we are gonna face for a long time, a long a long run. So this is uh, another challenge that I see right now. I think that well, for me, the, the intention of the question was kind of like. Uh, go through the Latin American challenges that web that makes Web three relevant, but then I think that we kind of like cover both because I think that uh, I listened listen from you the challenges that uh, Web three is facing right now to really being adopted to to Latin America. So I I think that's that's perfect. We we cover the bo uh, both sides of the coin. Um, I would love now to to listen in to your perspective on how Web3 technology adoption in Latin America has been different from other regions in the world. I think that for sure, as some of you mentioned, the language has been a key actor in, in this difference in, in adoption, but maybe I would love to hear from Mateo your thoughts on how really here has been different from your perspective participating and working on Give It and in other projects. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, particularly in Latin America, we can see that people really need it. And it's, it became like a movement in the sense that uh, we have many great products, many great entrepreneurships coming from Argentina, uh, Colombia, Venezuela, Mexico. And essentially it's because we are in front of the necessity, pure necessity of needing an alternative. Uh, an alternative for the trust that we are putting. We cannot trust anymore the government. We don't trust banks. Uh, trust is becoming like a more difficult asset to, to acquire and, and you have uh, to be careful where you are putting the trust. So I think Latin America has, has built a, a landscape for uh, Web3 where people are actually needing it using it because they need it, not because it's cool and it's uh, uh, a very new, innovative uh, in a product like may happen in, in Europe or some places that that they don't face a necessity right on right front. So, yeah, um, Latin America has the great potential for making Web3 even more relevant once we know how to uh, move the trust that is being put into the actual uh, systems, for example, the bank system or the government. We can see that it's been uh, a difficult change politically, but financially also is going to affect many, many people where um, they don't know how to how to do it. 
So it comes back to the, the challenge that many of you are, have mentioned already, and it's education. That's, that, that's going to be the, the main focus for us, to build trust through education, and then we can see how Latin America can become an even better landscape. Thank I, you. I, Thank I'd, you like to add, I'd uh, like to add something on top of that, if I might. Sure, sure. Go ahead, yeah. and then we go with Kryptonita. Sure, sure. Sorry. Um, yeah, so um, there is a systemic problem where we are, you know, Latin America is very much dependent on on the dollar, pretty much. So everything is traded in dollars, and or every, every country that I know in, in Latin America has suffered from devaluation, from currency devaluation, from inflation. Brazil, for example, has lost 90% value. The Brazilian real has lost 90% value against the dollar since its inception. And that's quite a lot. So pretty much whatever happens in the United States in terms of uh, interest rates, uh, hikes, whatever, affects everyone down there. And uh, and that's a big, a big, big problem. Uh, our governments, they pretty much most of the governments in Latin America are abusing the system, corrupting the system, and it's there's nothing that people can do about it. It's more than anywhere else. Uh, corruption happens, and I know that corruption happens very much in Brazil and Mexico, all other countries. There's really nothing we can do. So people are really like, okay, how do we, how do we, uh, uh, get out of this system right we are very much uh dependent on dollars we're very much dependent on whatever those people in power are going to decide and whatever they do affect everyone in terms of uh, in financially affect everyone and and that's that has been a big problem we've never had any uh financial education in school they don't teach you about financing school uh, i don't think it's uh the government's interest to, to kind of educate people about finance. And uh, we, we've seen that in Brazil has, I don't know, 220 million people, but only 3% of the population invests, invests in the, in the stock market. And with crypto, we already seen more people investing in crypto in Brazil than in the traditional markets. And that tells me something. That tells me that people are not only kind of speculating, like I say before, not only, oh, if I put my money here, I'm going to be rich. But no, hey, how do I hedge myself against whatever is happening here or whatever, the corruption? How to hedge myself against inflation? How to hedge myself against uh, dollar interest rates? So people are trying to find a different way, different system to protect themselves. And I think that's a trend. That's only going to go up as more people adopt, more people uh, go after, uh, you know, the barriers of language. And uh, like Gus say, the scammers, that's all the, the traditional media talks about, the scammers, right? Cryptocurrency is a scam. But once you pass all of that and understand the potential, understand why we're, we're here, why we're building. And, and I see a trend that people are kind of realizing, oh, I don't this is not only an investment, this is really a necessity, right? We really need crypto to to get out of the corrupted system and, and thrive. And I see that's a, a trend that's only going to go up from here, from now on. Thank you so much. I think that that was something that... I was missing to mention in the beginning when we were when we start talking about the challenges that Latin America make Web3 technology particular particularly relevant for the region and corruption for sure is um one of of the characteristics, let's say, uh that make this technology really, really important and we should highlight that point uh for sure. I know that Kryptonita wanted to mention something and then we can welcome uh, Juanca, which is also part of the Giveth Galaxy. He's he's also Latin American, so welcome uh, Juanca. But Kryptonita, go, go ahead. 
Yes, yes, I, I will be fast here. Uh, I just want to say that I completely agree with Matthew and Gelfi. It, it's interesting because a lot of the times we, we see people building protocols just for yields or for uh, some financial thing that will uh, be like let you make more money. But when we talk about Latin America, we see that this uh, isn't our main, main problem, our, our main concern right now. Uh, a lot of the teams that are from, from Latin America see that we need like real world solutions. Like we need to uh, be able to use crypto to pay bills or to pay things. Uh, I, I was actually at an event uh, last week and someone told me that uh, mining crypto and even holding crypto in Venezuela, it's considered a felony. So like we need, uh, we are we are seeing like a movement, at least I, I, I'm seeing a movement uh, that Latin America people working on Web3 are really trying to solve problems that we basically uh, have on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Not only that, but on, with inflation, uh, with uh, not being able to trust on banks, on government. So it, it's interesting to see this difference like between protocols being developed on, on Europe and like United States and on Latin America. I think uh, we have a... Um, a focus on solving problems that we face and not only like trying to earn some yield and like earning more money that we already have. You didn't need to, to go that fast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for your comment. I didn't know that actually uh, holding crypto or trading crypto in Venezuela was considered a felony. That's um, crazy. All the differences in culture, in political in, in society that we even have inside um, Latin America. I, I see some of your comments here. Um, Vlad says, the speculation protagonism is really a challenge. We'll put um, that why the efforts of education should be bigger. And then I would love if someone could help me translate what the message of DAP that uh, he added to the um, uh, tweet announcing the Twitter space would be really great. I would really appreciate and um, before I keep going and before introducing Juanca to the space, I would just love to uh, welcome everyone again for joining this Twitter space. It's dedicated as you as you can listen to the importance of Latin America for Web3 technology. We are discussing some of the challenges that make Web3 very, very interesting for, for Latin America's corruption, education, um, the broke economy that a lot of our countries have. We're here with uh, Bankless Brazil. We, we're here with uh, Vlad from Shapeshift and with Mateo from Giveth. All of us are Latin Americans and also work in the Web3 space. And also we have with us Juanca, which is, as I've mentioned, part of the Giveth Galaxy with Graviton Dao. So Juanca, welcome. Thank you, Almond. And um, thanks everyone for listening. And uh, hello to the speakers and to everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Juan Carlos, and I am also from the Colombian community. And yeah, I, I wasn't uh, thinking on on um, requesting to speak, but I just felt that I wanted to talk about um, the coordination struggle inside um, the communities, because um, something that we are doing also in Latin America to try to solve um, that um, um ice um, the, and that barriers that we have with, with language is that we have a bunch of local communities and we have local communities that are um, translating information. We are we have local communities that are that are making events and um, trying to raise uh, adoption and awareness. But um, it's always difficult to to coordinate because um, in Latin America, we have multicultural countries. And like, for example, our local government um, systems are like very centralized, tend to be very centralized. And for us, like the centralization is something new. So sometimes like people start contributing in the community and they feel or they think that there will be a hierarchy or that someone should tell them what to do. But um, it's also like a change of mindset um, that you have to go when you are participating in a, in a Web3 project. And I think that change of mindset is, is something that it's also a struggle, that we are too used to our legacy systems. We are too used to like asking for permission and like um, being told what to do. And, and um, 
especially in these community building things that are very like um, um, ad honorem and that uh, no one is really um, being paid for that. It's 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 a, um, a, str a struggle to align all the incentives of the different um, communities that can be inside of a country, and yeah, that's a beautiful exercise that um, also takes us to to face some of the challenges of decentralization, and um, yeah, try to use the the toolings that we have in Web three also to organize our communities and not only to like be communities talking about something that somehow we are not um, like properly um, using within our relationships and our way of doing things. So uh, I think that's also like a struggle and part of the learning curve that um, the community should be able to interact with all the toolings are available. Yeah, I agree that our education, well, at least for me, it was, it was very um impuesta so meaning that we really didn't learn how to kind of like think for ourselves how, how and and for sure what you're saying about understand the meaning of decentralization for for us as latin americans is even more harder and i've been noticing that uh participating in the web3 space that is really a challenge for us to to remove this figure that tells us what to do, how to manage our finances. So I think that that's also a cultural challenge, as as someone mentioned. I can't remember who. Uh, and also, it's crazy that our communities, as Bankless Brazil, as Shapeshift, uh, for sure, Gravity Dao, Giveth as well. We have a really big. Um, Spanish-speaking and Latin American community. Uh, Forgiveth is the second biggest one. And we actually recently translated the DAP into Spanish. This is the, the second language in which the DAP was translated. Because we saw the necessity of these communities um, being part of, of Giveth, but really struggling with um, integrating and collaborating because of the language barrier, as, as you mentioned before, too. So, um, go ahead, Vlad. Yeah, just like on top of this language, there's like, we were, I think, in Colombia and Manu from Doing Good asked like, hey, how do you guys translate like steak or other like slangs that like are easy to understand, not because of the literal meaning, but because of the cultural construction of the language that we use. And sometimes we choose not to translate some. So, um just like to make more clear when you're talking about language and translations and some people say, hey, AI language, like bot language, but there's like the really cultural, but here's like on those details and that's something I'd like to add. And uh, also just want to give a huge shout out to Jamer here because he was one of the persons that most like incentivated and encouraged like the Latin efforts on the projects we were on and always understood that uh, in a very close way that we native people understand. So I just want to shout out him too. Shout out. <laughs> Goose, go ahead. Talking about communities, uh, actually, I, I see like that uh, right now there is a good movement where like even Brazil always... Uh, Normally, Brazil is isolated because of it. This day, it is the only country which speak Portuguese. And right now, we, I see more connection with the other uh, countries. So in in Latin America, so this is the point. Uh, like we can connect uh, and talk with each other in, in your own language, you know. And I see the, uh, some communities like. It, Ethereum Samba, uh, I'm gonna say this name wrong. The other community, Ethereum Epico, help uh, Galf and Kipton need to help me with the correct name. If Kipo, yeah, if Kipo. If, if, if Kip. So I guess, like, even though we speak a different language, our culture is so close, you know? Like, and 
I, I guess in the South and Latin America, the biggest thing is gonna be communities. You know, like we we like people. We like to talk with people. We like it, it is the way that we connect really good. And what I see when I went to Colombia, what it was when I learned were like, okay, I can talk with, with with Colombians or Mexicans in Portuguese, and they they can talk with me in Spanish, and we understand. You know, so this is the thing that we are like to understand now and like I've, I've been so bullish and happy with this kind of movement this connection that we are, are having with other communities from other countries and we're like we are talking we have the same problem and we are trying to solve it together you know so this day i mean so bullish with uh with that I agree, I agree a hundred percent. Um, to be honest, I've, I've had way more fun attending to crypto events in Latin America than in uh, other regions. <laughs> I'm not going to mention um the other regions, but yeah, I I think that we as as Latin Americans connect more easily with with people that uh has a culture that's more like 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 our culture, right? And I can see here in the comments, someone saying, Ariel is saying, let's talk about solutions too. It's important to acknowledge the problems, but let let know what local talents are doing. And I think that this is really important. Mateo, you mentioned at the beginning of the Twitter space that you also collaborate with, uh, I believe, in Isla Tam and other projects. Could you maybe mention some examples of projects that are really um getting highlighted because of their good work in what they're doing in in for latin america and maybe spanish-speaking communities yeah i want to shout out particularly ethereum colombia because that's the main i'm um, supporting ethereum colombia uh, was a great part of the organization of defcon alongside ethereum latam and we have been building communities since 2020 21 or so um, and we are making a great effort since DEFCON uh, last year that we want to show and, and teach by example. So we are facing right now a, a cool, interesting process that is becoming a DAO ourselves. We want to use every fund that we have, every process. We want to make it uh, as decentralized as possible. So we are in, in that process of understanding what's the best way so we can teach people how we can do it by by showing by doing it ourselves so as Juanca mentioned coordination is super difficult is the most difficult uh, challenge that we are facing right now we have uh, trying to make in the DAO uh, work like uh, in a in a fashion of sub DAO so every region in our country because we are so different uh, in Colombia, uh, the north, the south, the, the middle of the country, we have many cultures inside our country. So it's, it's a very interesting experiment because it kind of represents in a bigger scale the, the whole planet. Because even though Colombia is so small in, in comparison, we have many cultures that coordinate. Even those cultures is, is hard sometimes. So... The efforts that we're making in, in education, we're trying to make uh, events, uh, conferences, uh, try to educate people, make content in Spanish as much as possible. So, yeah, I had to shout out Ethereum Colombia, that particularly is in, in the space right now. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy to, to be part of that, of that community. And I also know Ed Kipu, as someone already mentioned, is doing an excellent work. We are, I think that the next if Latam is going to be in Honduras, they are trying to handle that and it's going to be super, super great. Love it. Um, guys, I would love to hear from you too if you have any other examples about communities that are doing great or projects that are doing great for Latin America. Please raise your hand if you want to mention some. Um, um. I have um, one to mention. Uh, for sure, Vlad, go ahead. Um, I just want to mention a shout out because, like, uh, last week I was with Bob Burnquist in a community. He just, like, he got support from Tezos Brazil for, like, 
uh, assembling like a facility for um, technology learning in a very peripheral area of Niterói city here. We had like a whole inauguration event planning, but it couldn't go because the cops are like, had like a, a shooting with like the local community there. It was like, it was like a movie stuff. But in any case, we came back in the next day and the like, uh, I think Instituto Skate Cuida from Bob, also another project in Give If, is doing it like a nice job in a way that he got funds on Web3 on different like uh, organizations and delivers well for those organizations in terms of onboarding and awareness. And he's like using like the history and what he built the whole life to be a huge uh, bridge and like uh, conversion to of value that worked both ways really well. So. There's this facility assembling that I know is going to be a, in real life legacy. You know, there's not just a digital thing that we try and then like vanish. It's going to stay there. And the plan is like to make it bigger and like keep working. And that's just one of um, the examples of like this example builder. So not sucking his balls like we're friends, you know, like it's just it's one of the best examples I I I know I'm like huge effects on Latin America right now. So please go there and support his project. And also hey, Bank's uh, projects. <laughs> of course. Also if you can if you can tweet um the projects that, that you're mentioning would be great. So I can ping them here in this space. I just ping some of your projects for people to know exactly the accounts and, and and people can follow you as well um we have two new people that i believe are latin americans too uh, maybe they want to add some projects that are doing very well in the region um rod uh hey thanks for the opportunity to talk uh, actually i have a really practical question I'm Russian and right now I'm living in Thailand and I do not have access to bank, banks for, for a year. In Thailand, it's super easy to to live uh, with the crypto. You can, you know, just go to any ATM and uh, cash out crypto. And at the end of this year, I'm planning to move to Latin America. And uh, the question that really worries me, how can I, like, uh, if I have a crypto only, how can I uh, live uh, and in what countries, how hard it will be, like, how the things works if you have well, crypto only in Latin America? Um, so your audio is kind of like funny, right? So can you repeat the question so we can hear you uh, oh, better? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. If I have only crypto, how hard for me it will be to live in Latin America? And what's the best crypto-friendly country? Oh, great! I think that Bankless Brazil has uh, an answer. Yes. Yes. Uh, so right now, uh, the, the one of the challenges that we, we are facing is people accepting, believing that crypto is better than the fiat money. So basically, uh, majority of people in South America, they use an exchange to send money or to store their crypto. So and you're still going to need to to convert it to to uh to fiat money for most most of the cases but like i see a trend where same thing is happening in south america argentina is the most adopted crypto country i believe but brazil is also uh following the same trend where you can so there's places where you can get a haircut and and pay with crypto there are places where uh, people are already talking about accepting crypto in brazil there is a bitcoin island not much talking about it, where everyone there, including kids, buy their food with Bitcoin. Um, so I see there is a trend where people are, okay, we are, now we can take it. And in, in parallel, th there's also a, our, our central banks are moving quite fast, pretty fast to, to roll out a CBDC where it's all digital. Um, I think it's it's gonna happen even before United States or any other uh, place. 
So uh, the trend is that eventually, uh, that's something that we also talk about at Bankless, that good money that I believe is, is crypto, Ether, and Bitcoin is going to replace bad money, which is the fiat system that we have today. But if you move today, you're still going to have to convert it back to fiat uh, to, to, to live off. Yeah, and that's a very that's a very interesting point that you brought too because it makes me think like that's like a bear market. There's the economy of those places, but really like uh, you can live it very well like in Latin America and like if you were originally from a place like Denver, you know, like so if you join those stuff together, like having people from abroad like making projects here, doing making part of the projects here, like building from those places like crypto nomads all over the world, like coming from those places, they're not just going to like, uh, live, like live uh, in a very cool place in a very cool comfortable position, but they're going to be like in the core of the revolution. There's going to be at those places. So again, really going to decentralize. So that makes you, you ask like, what is like a nice place to me to live? And that's like, yo, that's what you got. Like, Come building here. Come building Brazil. Come building Argentina. You know, like, uh, you know, like bring the projects. Bring a little, a little of the crypto money for this place. Like being very directly. You know, uh, yeah. I just want to say that on top of. Uh, I like the the nature of our question. Thank you, Blah. Thank you, Bankless, Bankless Brazil, for for all your um, replies. And we have Crypto Chica here. We were talking about ETH Kipo and ETH Latam, and I believe you are part of those communities. So welcome, and we hear you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, I, <laughs> I asked for the mic because I want to speak about it. I want to talk about Sid Latam, but if you want, I can mention shortly what, what we do in it Kipu. Um, after it Latam Buenos Aires and it Latam Bogota, we understand the importance to work together with the other leaders from Latam. Uh, we met people from República Dominicana, Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, etc. So we decided to uh, to bring um, to be together and create Itkipu to uh, continue work in, in education and communities. So uh, we are planning the next It Latin event in Honduras in San Pedro Sula. So uh, we are, you are all invited. And um, if you want to join to our Discord, I'm right now uh, sharing a tweet with the link to the Discord. We have different areas like unit, unit court uh, where, when, uh, <laughs> where we uh, are working in public goods education, community. Uh, we have a, a unit core who is uh, working in notes and staking. So if you want to uh, came to our Discord and uh, bring uh, suggestions or decisions or whatever, please uh, join us. And I want to mention shortly uh, about Seed Latin. We, we were working in DeFi Latam, a different community, uh, the, from to 2020. Uh, we were creating educational content about Web3. Uh, we, we are a public good. And last year, we decided to um, create more uh, educational content about governance. So, uh, right now, we have two um, platform platform of delegate active. Uh, we have a an, a delegate in Optimism, uh, his uh, hoxes from Venezuela, and we have another uh, delegate from Peru. He's um, uh, cutting, and uh, he's active in the Ar Arbitrum uh, chain. So our mission is to create more, um, is to, to, to carry more Latinos 
to the Web3 governance because we think that it's important to take decisions uh, and to... Ahí lo voy a decir en español. Queremos llevar más gente a, a las gobernanzas Web3. So if you want to uh, join us, please uh, click in the link and come to our Discord. Thank you so much, Crypto Chica. And uh, please also, if you can tweet everything that you just mentioned so we can pin the, your tweets and share with the broader community would be great. And we're about to close this space, but uh, before we do it, I would love to hear maybe if you have some comments, uh, maybe as a final comment of how can we um, overcome some of these challenges that we mentioned with, uh, with Web3 technology, what's the way that you see that uh, we can make this technology more successful in our region um, as, as short as you can. So, um, Bankless, I don't know if you would like to start. Sure. Yes. So, uh, Bankless Brazil community took a path where everything we do is, is open and free and Uh, we took a public goods path where oh let's let's just focus in, in uh, onboarding as many people as we can. So I think as more people we educate about the technology itself, more it, it gets adopted. We have so much talent people in Latin America. I can tell from this space there's so many people that are well talented. They have no voice, has no exposure, and I want to see more projects coming out of Latin America instead of we exporting uh, labor to to um, United States or Europe. I want builders to really stick here and build real world projects uh, that are going to solve our daily uh, our daily uh, basis. But in order to, to get there, to achieve there and bring more people on board, more people, we need to educate them. So our efforts here at Bankless is to educate as many people as we can We uh, we need support. We we are on Give It. Thanks to Vlad that introduced us to Give It. We are there. We are collecting donations, grants. We are trying to live out of there to to at least uh, pay or maybe uh, our contributors to reward them for for all the the work they're done. So if anyone can support us on our journey, that's what we're trying to be, to do here. Bring more people. Adoption and export more talent and build more projects in Latin America. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, maybe Mateo, Vlad, if you want to go next with some final words. Yeah, I was trying to clap, but I raised my hand by mistake. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was a pleasure to be here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take the opportunity of saying goodbye here just to say that everyone's very welcome to NF2 Brazil. We're gonna give away some tickets for the event uh, through Bankless too, I believe. I saw this conversation. I think it'd be cool to, to make like a giveaway for one of the donors of Bankless Project on Give. It. If anyone put the link on the, on the comments, yeah, I'm gonna put it later uh actually right now uh so yeah everyone's welcome here i believe it's a huge movement the last event that you made called nft rio was the beginning of the whole community of nouns in brazil that's like really huge in that ecosystem um uh, and uh there's gonna be a huge meetup after like we this all started last year i think a lot of people in this uh, twitter space here were there and knows what i'm talking about so Yeah, I just want to chill the event a little bit and say that I love what uh, Crypto, Crypto Chica said about governance. Because when I see someone from Latin America like voting on like a bunch of maybe smaller water uh, wallets, but a bunch of people voting that I said like, okay, I got it. That's 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 it. Score. So I totally relate to that. And uh, wait, you all guys here in F2 Brazil. Let's make it happen. Let's make a project on GiveF to bring GiveF crew to NF to Brazil if you can. And it was a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot, guys and girls. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad. Uh, Mateo, Goose, 
kryptonita, any final words? Go ahead, Mateo. Yeah, sure. No, I just wanted to echo the idea of uh, come to LATAM and build, come and invest, come and just be here because it's the best place in the world. And I want to, yeah, we that we are working uh, as a community builders, Crypto Chica, Juanca, you in Colombia, everyone, uh, the focus should be to reshape trust, reallocate the trust that people are putting into the 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 systems that are established right now and let's rebuild trust on the new systems that we are making. It's going to be worth it. It's so hard, but I think that we can make it and Latin America can be a, a guidance for the rest of the world if, if we just learn to coordinate even better. Agree. It's all about coordination, right? Um, Kryptonita, some final words? Yes, of course. So... I just want to say thank you. It's awesome to see the ecosystem, especially Latin America, growing. Uh, I recently met Crypto Chica and a, a, a lot of other uh, amazing people from Iflatan and like If Kipu. And it's awesome to see like that the, the community is growing. We are getting together and like we are finally uh, reaching to a point that the whole Latin America community will get together and like onboard new people because everyone is developing their own their own things and like that that is important but at the same time that uh, do not help like the whole region so I, i'm so glad to to see like everyone getting together and finally onboarding the same mission uh, growing the ecosystem and especially especially trying to like keep talent here in latin america because something that uh, francis told me francis from if people told me on if Samba, uh, the event It Samba was like a lot of talented people from Latin America ends up on United States or Europe because they pay out more or because uh, the huge companies are there and the huge protocols are there. And that that's true, but that's also sad because we end up uh, losing a lot of amazing talents here in Latin America that could like be creating amazing solutions for the problems that we have. So. Yeah, if you are building something on Latin America, keep up the great work. It's hard. It's very, very hard. We have a lot of problems, not only with Web3, but with financial problems, um, monetary problems and government problems. But we are trying to like create, uh, to solve a lot of these uh, Web2 problems in Web3 uh, with coordination, with transparency, with uh, autonomy. So yeah, keep up the great work. And, like Let's help each other. That's my final message. Yay. Let's go and go some some words to close this space. Ah, uh, it's just finished. We are gonna finish it now. I'm so sad. <laughs> we just got it started. So, guys, everyone, uh, I like to say, united, we are stronger. So that's it. Uh, we have a, a profile on give it. And like who can support our committee is gonna be a, a, a huge help for us, like to maintain our contribute contributors like working. They are they are doing really good work there. We wanna wanna uh, pay better and reward them better for the efforts they are doing for our committee. They are work work uh, contributing really strong there. So who want to help us, like supporting us, uh, is going to be really welcome. And also thank uh, Vlad for this connect with Give It. Uh, in the, we, I'm so happy here, to be honest, I'm so happy to speaking with you all and see well talent uh, that, I, that I met in other crypto events and here. So like Again, United is going to be stronger, and I see uh, Latin America really strong. So I hope we have more space about that and talk about the other solution that we bring more solutions that people uh, can be aware of. Thank you. I agree. I think that there's more talented uh, we buy think so i i agree with you let's highlight that and uh now i would love to invite you to our ama session that we have every wednesday at 10 a.m central time facilitated with uh the 
for uh, by the great Ashley that's here. Big shout out to Ashley that's the Giveth Community Steward. So if you want to jump into the AMA session that we host, you can find the link to our Discord in our bio link tree. Is right there in our bio. So just, just jump in if you have any questions, if you would like to know more about Giveth, you're more than welcome. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, Crypto Chica, Juanca, and the other person that's not here anymore, the jump, and also add some words to our conversation. It was great to have you. And have a great, have a great rest of your Wednesday. See you very soon. Bye.